Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney journey here tonight with more of what is even this uh, turnabout is. Farewell, my turnabout. Last time, we did a bunch of uh, exploring, mostly because a random butler with a stitched face kidnapped Maya. And uh, then she escaped at the end last time, it seems. Unless that was part of Mia telling Phoenix what was going on. I assume not. And I just have no idea of the, intr the, the intrinsicities of it all. Because there's so much going on, but at the same time, I don't know exactly how things are going to play out. Because I genuinely don't know who the killer is right now. I did have an odd moment, like, as I was thinking about the case. I was wondering if they're, like, because obviously Andrew's, like, mentor who committed suicide... That's got to rope itself in here somewhere. And the deepest reaches of my conspiratorial mind uttered the words, What if Andrews' mentor wasn't dead? Which is stupid because she has to be dead for any of this to make sense. Then a second part of my brain went, What if her mentor, like, killed Andrews and made it look like a suicide? And then took on her life, which also wouldn't make much sense. My brain was just going in many directions, just like, what's what makes sense? And nothing does right now. Because the suicide has to play a part, as does Andrews' attempted suicide. The suicide note that Mr. Corrida, the jamming ninja has to play a part. The missing guitar has to play a part. There's just many entry parts, and we we assume that Andrews had some form of relationship with Corrida, potentially linked to the death of their mentor, because Andrews is like, mentor in the way of being an agent was the agent of Corrida. So what if Andrews was also, like, a friend of Corrida and they bonded over their mutual friend and, like, mentor figure's death? Hmm. There's just much going on, and I have no idea exactly how anything plays into it. This is an odd one. And then there's still, like, the weird thing of, hey, that, like, tomato juice wine glass that didn't fall over. The fact that Corrida was stabbed directly where one of his big Jam and Ninja buttons was supposed to be, but at the same time, that didn't look like the Jam and Ninja costume that was shown in the splash page. It looked more like... A more intricate thing because the gem and ninja is supposed to be just like normal ninja garb with a few pieces for the costume and then a guitar but the costume that Corrida was stabbed in well I'll show you was far more intricate so well, let's get on with it and see if we can like learn anything or at least defend things March 22nd 947 and now I'm imagining if there has to be somebody who went out of their way to play all of the, like, cases on the relevant days. Somebody had to have done that. Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way! That woman couldn't do anything like that. But quickly, I want to show the body. Mm, okay, it's... But, yeah, those buttons and the stripes w weren't there. And, like, yeah, the the buttons, the stripes that lead to the buttons. Or, like, I guess not stripes, but, like, colored pathways to where the buttons are. And then, like, the samurai... Yeah, samurai-esque armor. 
he does have the handkerchief that his character has, but like, unless I'm just b b mercilessly blind, I did not notice any of these other details on like the Jam and Ninja splash page, but looking at it now, it's entirely possible that I was just blind there. But yeah, it does seem like he was, hmm. It does seem like he was stabbed around where the button was. So it's possible that the knife went in and plucked the the button off. But at the same time, there seems to be like, I don't know, a, a little hole where like, no, that could just be like things about the button being attached to the costume, but I don't know. There's thread that looks like it would connect the button, but then also a hole or two, so who knows. Hmm. Weirdness, weirdness. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there's someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Mia, we must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. Oh no! Has uh, Franziska been tracking us now? Oh no! It does have a... S no, this is a different beep. The other one is more high-pitched, I think. <laughs> this is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit, how shall we say, tired. Don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides... What you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. G G For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait! Huh. Maya is the gift, isn't she? The killer probably... Hmm. Huh. I'm trying to piece things together. Because, obviously, Maya escaped with the card, and with that, the killer intentionally left the card there to let Maya escape. So she might run to the courthouse. Well, why would she run to the courthouse? I guess she could have run somewhere else and might learn from somebody else that... Like, maybe she ran, would have run to Gumshoe at the police, and they might have said, Oh, well, pol uh, Gumshoe is being involved with a case at the court today. And then Maya might come to the courthouse to get... Because... Uh, my thought process is, Maya might have gone to the Wright & Co. law offices, found nobody there, then went to Gumshoe, might have been told he's at the courthouse, and then she might come to the courthouse, bust in, and Phoenix will go, but wait, you were supposed to be kidnapped. And then she'll say, I f w managed to escape with the help of this card. And then Phoenix will go, hmm, so the killer had to have had access to Andrew's bag to leave the same kind of card there, or it could implicate that Andrew's is the killer, but I don't think she is. Yeah, that's another thing. We need to figure out the identity of the killer and the identity of the killer, you funny little rascal. And that's a part of my brain, that's why a part of my brain went, what if the killer is, like... Andrew's mentor, like, what is her name? Im Impax? Celeste Impax. But that doesn't make much sense. Because, then again, so many people thought that, well, at least Phoenix 
thought that Miles Edgeworth was dead, so who knows? People get to come back from the dead relatively easily. And plus, it would kind of mirror the uh, second case a bit, where uh, a character was a character who was supposedly dead, so who knows? Hmm, that is kind of a running theme, isn't it? In the, the second case, there was a character who had technically faked their death. And in the third case, there was the mistaken identity of the victim, where the killer wanted to kill somebody else, but uh, accidentally killed the victim. So who knows? Maybe I'm just grasping at straws to be like, maybe there's a thing. The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer Dude, who was that? Uh, um, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? <laughs> okay, so he has a slight bit of wit to him. A slight bit of wit, even though he's a follower little man. Oh, that's, that's a bad sign. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ungard. Are the prosecution ready? Oh, are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. And there's no prosecution. I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor. Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Miss Karma was shot by an unknown... What? This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. Is that... Is that the killer's present? <laughs> is that... The, the killer's... The kidnapper's... Present a shot von karma? What? Okay, I didn't I I thought it would be a funny aha. Uh -huh. Well, surprise, right? I, Edgeworth, am taking over this case, actually. But no. Well, I guess technically that could still happen, but I didn't expect it to come via a shot von karma. What? Sh shot? Somehow, I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present? Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. Ah. Excuse me. It would be to your advantage. This, this is totally insane. Miss Von Karma, is she all right? I don't have that answer. She's alive. She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Who? Your. I thought he'd show up. Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Bronzika von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. Everyone's like, but I thought he was dead. Well, that's one way to get him back in the stand. Ms. Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Well, it does seem to be the Von Karma way of getting shot in the shoulder related to cases that might also be related to other crimes from years ago. Huh. Only this time, she's being shot during the trial of the crime that's connected to the other crime. Well, I guess suicide's technically a crime. A crime scene, I suppose. So yeah, that's funny. Luckily, I have looked at this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt Ungard. The court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Well, that's interesting. Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. But Maya still has to be out there. So, uh, 
witness. Your, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. D detective Gumshoe. The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Uh, yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. I wonder if he'll help us in his own way, like he did in the past. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corridor, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. But it had to have had something to do with the murder because the water from the vase smashed onto it while it was closed and it was open when everything was, like, happening. Somebody stole the guitar. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. I just hope there's no uh, shenaniganery when it comes to, like, uh, Don't uh, badger the poor gumshoe. He's very depressed. Like that weird clown thing I managed to avoid. Well, let's press on it. Why not? Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8 p.m. And then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Huh. And uh, speaking of that, I want to quickly look over the... We don't have an autopsy report. We have been bamboozled! The victim, Juan Corda, was found dead in his hotel room. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? C correct? Maybe. Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt on God's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. On Guard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. My see. And that's when she found the victim's body. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. Don't really know why I'd press on this, but let's do it anyway. The cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Corda was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now a real pro's attention will be drawn here, to his bandana. Hmm, ban banana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck. So he was asphyxiated? And why was he also stabbed? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then what about the knife? It seemed... Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the judge shall become gumshoe for a day. It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm. We have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Ah, we got the autopsy. 815, strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Strangled? Or could it be something else? That's interesting. Oh, never mind. My brain was just like, oh, I have to do things for that. For some reason, my brain thought that pressing this wouldn't bring up the present button for some reason, because brain is dumb. 
But he was strangled? But then why stab him with a knife? If he was strangled, there's no need for a knife. Which means that the knife coming from Mr. Ungard's room is circumstantial at best. Yes, it's odd that the knife came from his room. Yes, it's odd that the button got into his ninja, like, samurai pants. But surely that's a red flag. That <laughs> something odd's going on. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. And, nope, he, that's actually his uh, thing. He does look normal. Brain was just dumb. The German ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How's that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Uh, so much for my theory, then. Only bears Korida's fingerprints. So... Hmm... He was strangled and then stabbed, with the stab basically being just there to frame on guard. The only fingerprints on the case are his, but that doesn't really get rid of the possibility that, like, somebody wore gloves? Uh. But... Hmm... But then how did water splash on top of it? So maybe there was an altercation there before, and it was closed. Then that, that could have splashed the water. And then for whatever reason, he might have taken the guitar out, smashed it, then like strangled himself with his own bandana? I don't know, something weird's going on. Considering that he was strangled by the bandana, and we have two attempted suicides, one of which seemingly confirmed to be, like, hanging. Something weird's going on. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corrida, had apparently already taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. So he didn't even bring the guitar. It's almost like he expected to lose the award ceremony and therefore have no reason to have his iconography with him because he wouldn't have to go on stage to do a presentation of Hell Yeah, I Won. But then why would... So there could have been an altercation. Water was splashed on... But then why would somebody open the case looking for the guitar? Why would some... Could it have been the actual killer and they might have wanted to use the red guitar to frame on guard even more somehow? Hmm. Weird. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Why arrest on guard? Mad on guard and Juan Corridor were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. Excuse me. 
Mask for evidence, there's the German ninja's button. It was ripped off of the ninja costume and was found in Mr. On Guard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant bought, brought, bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Doubtful, because he used that knife to eat. Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Wait, but he couldn't have bought it. It's from the Gatewater Hotel. Maybe he meant brought it? But still. Man, there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes. And we know that the victim's blood, uh, uh, that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? German Ninja's button added to the court record. Was ripped off costume, covered in court as blood, found in on guard's Hakama. All of this points very clearly to defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Heh, <laughs> I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like, and just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. Uh, it is kind of nice to have somebody who isn't just throwing, like, weird insults at me the entire time. Adding guard. Well, let's press. Just let's go crazy. <coughs> but in terms of popularity, Mr. On Guard won, did he not? Yeah, but you know what's ironic, pal. One corridor was always one step behind Mr. On Guard and everything. This year, it seems like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Corda lost the Grand Prix in the end. That is too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. Except he didn't bring the guitar, so I don't think he expected to win. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. Wait just one second here. Mr. On Guard was beating Mr. Corda on the popularity pours. Pours? The popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Hmm. Yes, I quite agree. Well, detective, um, it's not, well... I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Uh, no, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. Jeez, Edgeworth, why are you so harsh? No! Now, now, detective. Let's continue with the testimony. No, not my poor pension, too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We could talk about my pension later, sir. Um... What about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? As for evidence, there's the German Ninja's button. Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Oh, what do you mean, pal? Oh, um, let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off the German Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell by just looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it! Anyone could have smeared the blood on there afterward. Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir! Alright, I knew it had to be that piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in, it's probably not. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And the thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it. They're a perfect match, pal. Uh, that's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. It was ripped off the ninja costume and was found in Mr. On God's Hakama. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corrida. And then we did a search on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police hadn't ha didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? 
Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, Mr. Wright? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm. So is the defendant the owner of this knife, then? The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Except it says... What? It says the, the hotel name on it. Let's press and then present it. There's no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't some pocket knife. It doesn't fold, so it's not great for walking around with, either. Ah, uh, well, this is not good. If the prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder, we're done for. Phoenix? Yes? There's something very interesting about what the detective just said now. Think carefully before it's too late. A button covered in a victim's blood and a knife with on guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay? All right. Okay, Phoenix? Because it says gate water on it. It can't have been bought. Wait a second! What? So the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal! The defendant... <laughs> it was I, Manfred von Karma, who killed Juan Corda! That would be a hilarious twist. That I, I, It would be weird, but hey, everyone seems to imply that he's dead, but everybody f like seemed to act like Edgeworth was dead, so who was... Who... Who knows in this crazy world of complete a court case in three days or die? Did not buy this knife. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. You know, come to think of it, if it weren't for the fact that I'm fairly certain that Von Karma is, like, truly dead, I would half believe that he was the killer. But at the same time, I think that he would be too crazy to be that nice to Maya if he was going to kidnap her. I don't know. Then again, that would maybe... I don't know. No, he has to be dead. I don't believe it. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why did you believe that he bought it, gumshoe? The murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. Shh, I have used a spirit medium to kill Juan. <laughs> An evil spirit medium channeling dead killers to then go on to kill more... That would actually... That would actually be an interesting plot line. Huh. That would actually be very interesting. Yes, this is very true. This is very big. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? But it's literally the property of the hotel. I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough to not to realize this. But I didn't... Oh. oh. The question is... Where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Corridor's room. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate him last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. Tomato juice! There's a knife and fork on the table. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt on guard. 
especially what was on top of his table. There's something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? Yep, I saw this one coming. We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ungard's knife was missing. Uh. Mr. Ungard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife to a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was pr a premeditated murder. But wait, that means that actually works against them because if it was from his room that he used to eat a meal, then his fingerprints were going to be on the knife anyway. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps I just walked headlong into. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of time, Your Honor. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What evidence do we have that... W uh... The only evidence is, like, the wine glass. And I guess, yeah, the wine glass is really the only thing, except for all of the evidence related to Andrews. But she said that she'd go crazy if I did that. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well, Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, a gavel of his will be ringing out for the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? I don't know what the boo. There's one... One piece of evidence that catches my attention. I like that it's like... There's one shifts to Edgeworth. Like, is he like looking, looking to Edgeworth to gauge his reaction? He's just like, okay, how many... Uh, how many pieces of evidence do I need to present here? But I'm trying to think. The only thing I can think of is the diddly da. It has to be the wine glass, right? Because everything else, okay, it can't be any old evidence. Old evidence being the guitar case, the and all of this. And the only thing that's like relevant is the wine glass because it was there undeterred. It's like it hasn't been drank, but it was also not spilled. And it's there in the crime scene photo where everything else is smashed. So it has to be that. I'm not exactly sure what that proves, but okay. One piece of evidence. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I'm giving you one chance. And only one. Was that what the judge is saying, right? Is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtain for all of us. You may now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Wine glass. This is a wine glass. I also just noticed as I presented it, the entire penalty bar was lit up. <laughs> this is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The judge then goes, Sorry, right, but that is evidence that we have seen already. You can't do that. <laughs> that would be evil. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm, well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Oh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? 
What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? Obviously, the answer has to be there's no way, right? Because there's way too much, like, tomato juice and stuff that... Did it. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah, because obviously if we say it's possible, they'll say, well, if it's possible, diddly dee, but I'm going to say there's no way. If I appear weak here, the trial's over. That's what I thought. I can look for more proof, my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with its, <laughs> and point with certainty. They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. <laughs> the defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set up the cup on the table. Hmm, you've turned the situation on its head again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have evidence to support it. What? What a bastard. How dare you have evidence? That's illegal in this world. Then again, we're prosecuting a guy who has no motive, so meh. You're not thinking hard enough today, right? Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected for fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were one and Adrian Andrews. Well, that's mean. Hmm. Bleh. This is bad. What? Oh yeah, just smack me more, why don't you, court record? And this is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corrida. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Tisk tisk tisk. Now do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Uh, I thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. Wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? I think his idea is he wants to give the defense as much evidence as possible so that if they have the ability to prove that their defendant is indeed innocent, they have all of the, like, Abil like, they have the ability to no matter what. I think that's what Edgeworth discovered on what it means to be a prosecutor. To be a prosecutor is to present as much evidence as possible and not go for a guilty verdict because they are there standing in front of you, but go for a guilty verdict because you truly believe that they are guilty. I think that's what he's doing, but he's still presenting evidence for to the court and even delaying the verdict so that if there is still the possibility of innocence, it can be proven. I think that's what Edgeworth discovered. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. <laughs> witness, your name and occupation. <laughs> I still love that pose. Oh! <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I wonder what happened to the calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy, it's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet? It was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand. 
the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand. <laughs> I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all the court needs to know. <laughs> Still love that pose. Oh! <laughs> In this court, there has to be a woman hurting the judge prosecution. Well, actually, this is the first time that the prosecution got smacked. Ah. Shush, I'm talking to my dear edgy witchy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madam. No, no, please, by all means interrupt her, please. <clears throat> Anyways, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dearie Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone is crazy over that on guard, seeing he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I've no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Corrida. Um, but those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well, please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. <laughs> Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. This is still funny. Is this the second, like, veteran witness we've had? Because there was Lotta earlier. And technically a lot of still. Hmm. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye on the whole thing. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard. Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Maybe they were in a gay relationship. Hmm. So Mr. On Guard came out of the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. My see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Hmm. I'm going to guess that maybe we're supposed to present the tabloid to be like, ah, is this what you were referring to? All right, let's do it. You're pacing around his room. Miss Oldbag, what was your post at that night? The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help, I'll have you know. It was for the level-headed samurai show. Heh. <laughs> I even took out a few of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, what is it? Something you were interested in, and just what was that? It's not something little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know. It's a top secret between me and Juan. Oh, and Edgy Poo, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But it should prove relevant. We can always have it ha appended to her testimony later. It looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm, and did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? All right, so we'll press on everything, and if there's nothing else, we will present the tabloid gossip on that one. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. Oh, then would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corda's room? I have no idea! I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why, ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not included in the report. In any case, the witness then saw someone, correct? That's right, I saw a man coming out of poor Juan's room. Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of Juan's room, it was... he was? Yes, he was. I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right about now. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. You're such a weirdo. It was on guard. Matt on guard. You saw my client? Are you sure about that? 
Yes, he. Really? Annoying brat, when I say I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Hmm. I don't think the person's clothes, because then that would be a repeat of last time. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Or maybe. Then again, the person's clothes would be important, because if she says it's the full costume, again... Hmm. Hmm. What's the person he's carrying? I don't think that matters. The person's face. This is Windbag, and you just said a repeat of last time. <laughs> because last time, she just saw the Steel Samurai, so let's go with the person's clothes, maybe. I should have saved. Oh, well. Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome young man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, no, what was it? Oh, yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing, that racing jacket. Ah, he was wearing that at the detention center, too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. <laughs> Men. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright... Was this testimony just now important or relevant? Hmm. It has to be. Let's see. Was ripped from his costume, was covered in court, found in on guard's hawk. Hawk come on? Then he would have been in his costume. Yeah, he was, he was in his costume when they patted him down and searched him. And it was after the show, and he was supposed to go and do a post-show thing... So he wouldn't have changed out of his, like, show clothes into his gaudy jacket. So yes, it's very important. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right, witness, please. Ah, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must. All right, we shall save, and then I'll press this for more, and then we'll present. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? Yeah, got the dream. I've been busy with final preparations for an event these last two weeks, and I accidentally missed the stream anyway, but I'm glad I'm back. Thank you for joining again. This last case has just been nuts. But I think we're on a good track. I think Maya escaped, but I don't know. I don't know who the killer is. <laughs> Everything's nuts. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? What do you think? It's not like I've seen him in anything other than that horrible thing. I'm sure he was wearing it. She sure is sure of herself to the point of self-absorption. She may not remember things or be mistaken here and there. Or be mistaken here or there. But I don't think she's lying. That's bad for us, really. But that's how the human mind is. It also has the tendency to jump off topic. She strayed into a few interesting side topics this time, too, hasn't she? But that's what makes her a sweet old lady, right? That's because you're not the one who has to question her. That would be amusing. But I do believe... I know what I need to present. Because... If he was... Because this murder happened between the Presentation Grand Prix reward show and the post show. And the Nickel Samurai was supposed to present a diddly D. And after the body was found, they searched on guard and found the button in his Hakama, a.k.a. his costume pants. So he was still wearing his costume when he was discovered. So, he could not have been in his civilian gaudy jacket. <laughs> I see you've made it past one instant game over. Yep, it was quite troubling to see the full penalty bar flashing. But luckily I got it on the first try because it's just like, hmm, what's relevant here? I'm going to assume the wine glass, even though the wine glass then turned out to actually not be that important, but eh. But we're going to present the Jammin' Ninja's button. I clicked the wrong button, but luckily it didn't do anything. 
I would hate to accidentally present something and nuke myself one day. Miss Old Bag. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Ah, it's a button number two of the Jimmy Ninja's costume. Okay, that's hilarious that she knows. Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Give it here! Give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this! <laughs> I still love this pose. Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. Yeah, I'd love to see you play this case. I feel it's one of it'll be one of your favorites. It's definitely the most interesting so far. The weird bellboy with the stitched up face. The suicide that's tied in. The fact that I'm fairly certain, like, at first, I thought the present that the killer was going to send over was Maya escaping. Because they're like, aha, I'm going to leave this c card here, and Maya will escape and bring the card with her, and that might be a thing. I don't know. But I just, I have no idea who the killer is. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, uh, Francisco was shot! Everything's nuts. This button was discovered on Mr. On Guard's body during a full-body search. See, see? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was that rascal on guard. It was caught up in the pleats of his Nickel Samurai Hakama pants. See, see? And on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness. Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant... Matt on guard was wearing his usual racing jacket? Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore that trendiest dress, then maybe but instead I have to put up while wearing this ridiculous looking outfit. You'd agree this outfit is right up to... Let me tell you, it's heavy, so heavy. I wish I would have switched the CDs long ago, but I'm keeping this. A dream alive for all the kids out there. Uh. Understand? No, take a good look at the rear. You're closer. Matt is interesting. Let's talk to me during Curly. You should have the thing in your pool. Now he's got style. Uh. Now hold your tongue still there for one second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. On Guard, the man... But Mr. On Guard, the Nickel Samurai! But when you think about it... Yeah, this game is really dark. <laughs> They're really one in the same anyway. Miss Old Bag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Eiji Poo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important and agree with me for a change. Yeah, I see his voice acting is top tier. <laughs> for each real quest line's the same. Thank you. I have left an impact on somebody. Ha <laughs> ha! Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Eh, all right, if you must. I should be the one sighing, not you. Who I saw. On guard. On guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai. That's right. It was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Wom. But you just said that he was wearing the racing jacket. I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy, thinking such rude things. But, but the possibility does exist. Ah, youngins, today I told you, there's no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. <gasps> another day, another, oh yes, I remember. Yeah. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Hmm. I wonder if we'll just be able to present, hey, you forgot. <laughs> like, you mixed up Samurais before. Well, let's press. I don't think we need to press on, uh, now I remember. Be a little more careful of your testimony, please. Not too long ago, you said he was wearing his racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago? Then let me ask you this. When you were an itty bitty, what was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, whippersnapper? My dream, huh? Well, I, uh, wanted to be Judge Wagner, hero of the public's court, so what? See? And look where you are now! You're not Judge Wagner, are you? Are you? <laughs> She's so nuts. Well... What I said earlier, who puts any weight into things like that? The now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Since when did court become theatrics over testimonies? 
All that matters is that man was inside that costume. Isn't that enough? Oh, I got <laughs> Judge Wagner achievement. <laughs> Laughs and having wanted to be a race car driver. Yes, it would have. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. How would it be convenient? And why would that be? That way, no one would see his face, of course. But there's still no advantage for him that I can see. In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out all the more. You are such an annoying child. You are such a anno a annoying. You're such an annoying child. You haven't, you know that. You disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it. Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. See, at least that's somewhat reasonable. He had to get to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime. Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony store or store show? Well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the Jam and Ninja. Of course it included him. That's why Ungard came out of Dear One's room. I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyway. You should play the original DS version of the game. Boy, you'll love the typos then. Oh, boy. So he must have worn the Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Wan. So let me ask you one last thing. The person you saw. It really was the Nickel Samurai. As showy as ever. Haven't I been saying that this from the very beginning? Can I throw in the towel yet? Hmm. You don't need to think on too hard on this one. Huh? There's a contradiction in her testimony and it's sitting in plain sight. Yeah, she just said that she changed her testimony. The question is what that contradiction means for us. Well, I have to figure out what you're talking about first, but okay. Hmm. There's a meme about a typo in this game. It's one of my favorite AA memes. I <laughs> don't think I've run into that one. I'm trying to think. What could it be? Hmm. Let's see. Saw the Nickel Samurai. Convenient for him to wear. He had to go to the post show. So he must have worn it when stabbing poor Juan. But I'm trying to think. Hmm. I wish that we had, like, a picture of the Nickel Samurai. Nope. Just remembering, the Nickel Samurai is a full costume. <laughs> the contradiction is the witness herself. Exactly. But. Hmm. My mind immediately jumps to the knife, because if he was in the Nickel Samurai costume, he would be wearing gloves. But at the same time, it's the same knife that came from his room, so it might have been used for eating, and eat, but he would have still been in costume, wouldn't he? Wait, you don't have the Nickel Samurai picture? At least I don't think so. There's the crime scene, hotel guide map. Oh no, there's the, there he is. And it's all costume stuff. Yes, you're correct. For some reason, I just completely forgot. <laughs> A glossy photo Maya pushed onto me. For some reason, I just vanished from my mind. <laughs> But yeah, if he was in his costume, that wouldn't leave that many fingerprints, but at the same time, I assume that it was the knife he used to eat the food earlier, but maybe he was still in costume to eat, mm, but it's the only thing that jumps out to me. Also, this case features another stupidly indirect contradiction where you present the Nickel Samurai poster to indicate something else. Oh boy. I'll keep that in mind if anything weird comes up, as well as uh, make use of vigorous saving. That's always nice. Oh, dang it. I'm, I'm a fool. I shall go through everything again. Luckily, everyone's nice. So this is... If I were to present the knife, this would be the one because it has specifically Nickel Samurai costume and stabbing the victim at the same time, in the same place. But do I want to do it? Do I want to do it? Hmm. Then... Eh, it's the only thing I can think of, so knife! Knife! Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Also, it looks like a butter knife, so that's hilarious. A gold-plated butter knife. Yeah. Your Honor, do you know why this pic uh, piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That's exactly what I'm driving at. What are you driving at? And whose car are we driving? 
If Mr. On Guard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. He's true, and they were very sticky, they noted. That hesitation brings back memories. Generalized anxiety disorder for you. Yeah, probably. Then again, it's probably just me overthinking things because this game has thrown so much at me, which I guess could then mean this game is giving me anxiety. Hmm. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his glove off before he began the stabbing. That's dumb, Edgeworth, and you know it. And why would he do something like that to leave his prints on the murder weapon? There's no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in his costume as the Nickel Samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Well, you... Edgeworth, you literally said earlier that it's premeditated murder because he brought the knife with him. I'm going to be pres Oh, I was talking about myself. I'm not an archer diagnosing a YouTube streamer. <laughs> that's... Ah. That's fair. <laughs> just my brain jumping from thing to thing, trying to go fast. <laughs> Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes. I have heard of that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? There is a contradiction! This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony! What are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. On Guard was the killer. If that's the case... I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. Because you wanted knife! This knife. This was used by Mr. On Guard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corrida. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm. Oh, he didn't get smacked at all by that. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it, like bees on a hive. I love the back and forth general humor here. Justice for All and uh, Trials and Tribulations have their flaws, but they really put in use some of the uh, things the players use from Game 1 and Rise from the Ashes. That's always nice. Flaws can be overlooked so long as the rest of it is really good. They can still be brought up and be like, hey, that exists, but so long as the good outweighs the bad, I'm usually having a good time. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? Because he was strangled, but they discovered the strangulation really fast. So would it be to... F because it has to be to frame Matt on guard. Because the killer, our, like, sponsor to this crime show who kidnapped Maya, specifically said that somebody was framing him. So I'm going to say... Uh, save. To frame Matt on guard. It's to frame my client, Mr. On Guard, of course. To frame? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Ugh. Witness! Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy Poo? 
Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. On Guard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now! Look, I was waiting around in the front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. All right, then. Who were you waiting for? Hmm. <laughs> that's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you are waiting for Mr. One Corridor. Am I correct, witness? <laughs> the way you think, you're a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corrida. She was waiting for Andrew. No, yeah, Adrian. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder. All right, I skipped. I'm a fool. If it's who I think Mia's hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss Old Bag, you were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? You were waiting for this glass of wine. Adrian Andrews. Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. On Guard's manager. But, but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm. Hmm. Ah, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews, without a doubt the witness thought so as well. <laughs> Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. Witness? What in the world are you... Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I got some information. Some very top secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. While you, while you face down the windbag, remember to stay hydrated. The actual crime. Old Bag committed the murder because she'd heard Edgeworth returned and she wanted to be a witness in the murder Edgeworth would prosecute. Does that mean she also shot Franziska? <laughs> oh, that would actually be kind of... <laughs> she shot her with a real blaster this time. <laughs> but what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. My see. Very well, then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you young'uns. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. <laughs> secret information. That Uncard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close of Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? The defendant sent his manager? What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. And isn't there saying, the truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter, and found that the truth the article proposes is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. But also, if this line of thinking does prove true, doesn't that mean that... Andrews heading into the victim's room would also be kind of wonky. I don't know. Also, I forgot to mention, but I just finished uh, the Ace Attorney Investigations 2 case where Regina, Barry, and Money the Monkey come back. Minor spoilers. But Mo actually manages to make the circus a huge success. Honestly, I, I don't, wouldn't call that, well, maybe spoilers in a way. But still, neat that Investigations is going into old cases too. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right! And God is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth! Well, as long as the old saying goes, 
We gotta burn old bags of fire. <laughs> He's just like, well, if she can create old things that are new, I'll do the same. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Danger zone! I don't think we need to press on the evil, evil man. But let's do it anyway. You can't say something like that without proof. That's just slander. But it's true. That woman was getting intimate with poor Juan. Look, it says so right here, doesn't it? Manager to the stars, Miss AA. But the name of the magazine this came from is Gossip Land. What? Are you saying that gossip is all just a pack of lies? <laughs> what do you know? I suppose next you'll swear to me that the news is 100% truth. Um... Honestly, Sonny, you can't discriminate between the news and gossip. Yes, discrimination is bad, Mr. Wright. Discriminate? When did I do anything like that? Anyway, on God will never get me to say touche. Miss A.A., you mean Miss, um, uh, Mia Faye's attorney? That would actually be kind of funny. It was actually the ghost. Well, let's get more pressing. A scandal? What do you mean by that? You're a dim-witted one, aren't you? I can't believe you don't know what a scandal is. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? Uh, no, no. I wasn't asking what the word scandal means. Even I know that much. Well, that and God thought he could own the monopoly on popularity. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close of one. You don't have any proof that Miss Ungard did such a thing. Mr. Ungard. Miss Ungard? Why did I say that? Did such a any such thing. You must be suffering from shock. The shock of hearing the truth. And now, since you're in so much shock, you can't do anything right. You're right. I can't do anything. But boy, do I wish I could do something about you. All right, then, Sonny. Show me what you've got. Can you show me proof that Ungar didn't bear any ill will? Hmm. Do I even... Hmm. Because my thought would be... Hmm. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm trying to think. Do I present evidence here? I don't know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We haven't pressed through everything yet. Show me proof that Unguard didn't bear any ill witness. To be fair, Miss Unguard would make a. More of a since since sound like a French phrase mise en garde. Huh? That's actually kind of funny. I accidentally improved upon. Hmm. I'll decline for now. I don't have anything to offer. See, just as I thought. And you were lecturing me about anything without proof. You've just given me a free pass to say whatever I want, whenever I want, silly boy. Me and my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles for you, anyway. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. So, what do you mean by I took action? Like I already told you, I was lying in the wait close to the crime scene. Once that slimy woman came out of Juan's room, I was going to capture her and teach her a good lesson, something you young'uns need. You are going to teach her a good lesson? I was going to make her eat the damaging beams of my ray gun. Like this! No, stop! <laughs> well, it was too bad that woman didn't come through the door that night. Oh, and this is top secret, you've got that. Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? Wait. What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know this secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. And she said that she was going to catch her in the act. It's a secret. Even you, uh, even if you drill the hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did that old bat get such a secret piece of information? I I have an idea, but I'm trying to think. No. Did you steal the fucking thing? So no one else is supposed to know this secret info. Wait, Lada specifically said that she kept her tabloid thingy thing that she was going to... That's it. Lada had her tabloid thing of the thing that she had written up before getting, like, photographic proof, and she kept it in her camera bag. 
and somehow Miss Oldbag must have found it and stole the camera for some reason because of that scandal that she wanted to see. No one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Oldbag? Why are you looking at me like that? Stop that! Witness! I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire your secret info, isn't it? You stole a camera! The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing. On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her uh, uh, impressions about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, no, I said impressions. Then, then, then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless? Ah, that's it. That's the note. Ah. Ah-ha! No! You see, this is something completely different! This is my top secret list to buy groceries to buy! Hmm, then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note. I'm a huge fan of wands, that's why! That infamous puffy-head whippersnapper, she's working with that evil on guard! She said so herself! On guard, I'm his sidekick! She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. I was only checking what she had written. Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? I was only trying to help out like the angel that I am. I'm well, It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. <laughs> that is an amazing line, Edgeworth. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook it just this once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? Pile on the pressure more, probably, I assume. Then again, maybe if we forgive her, he'll be nicer, but it's all bag. Let's, let's pressure Granny. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a deafening blow to the prosecution. Witness, you said that the only thing you stole was that note. Is that correct? This is stole? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it! Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? Miss Oldbag, I don't believe that that note is the only thing you stole that night. It has to be the camera, right? Because it was in the case, so I should present it again? Yeah, I should present it again. Yeah. It's like the knife, do it again. Miss Oldbag, that note was with a camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie $1,600 camera disappeared on me. Why, why, witness! What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it's only logical that you have the camera, too. Ah, looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Cheese with your wine is a good one-liner to save. At the event I organize, I accuse a guy of loving large bananas and having bad outside. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny for some reason. Is this the camera you're looking for? Uh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know? I still eat meals like you. I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's what I noticed it said. Slimebag celebrity photographer extraordinaire. <laughs> Welcome to Ace Attorney Hell, basically. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of picture she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. So we can expect the security guards to steal from us? Bailiff, check the camera photos. Hurry! We must examine them at once! <laughs> what pronouns do you use? I want to make sure you're a winning son joke. Ah, like he, him, male, sure. <laughs> I am not at all bothered. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have? There's only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it to the court. Are you winning, son? So far, I haven't gotten any penalties this case. This, this is, this is a nickel samurai. See, I told you, that's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. She said she saw him with the racing jacket. 
How is that not a lie? I want to hunt Edgeworth for sport. No, he's a good guy now. He's just kind of a jerk. <laughs> Picture taken in the hallway. But what does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? His photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. On God clearly stated that at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. If that is the case, then... Then Nickel Samurai is... The defendant. <laughs> he faked his death. Well, I don't know why yet, but I'm sure we'll learn. <laughs> and oh boy, here's the best part of the case. How did it, this happen? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright? The court will consider them before we close. I don't even know how we do this. Hmm. Do you agree this photo is decisive evidence against your client? Well, let's take a look. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be as many flowers there. Like, surely there were more flowers in front of Corda's room compared to earlier. Let me... Hmm. I should probably also, like, uh, compare that to this one. Has one big pauldron. Kind of rope belt. Wait, this part is extremely tricky. Robot hand, trident. Is there something weird? He has that kind of pauldron. Long glove. Belt, robot hand. Hmm. You might need to look up the answer. Ah, da, da, da. Maybe this is the part because I have also because I have Twitch chat and YouTube chat. I'm just I, I just want to make sure that like uh, I want to try and do it on my own even if it is tricky. But it does seem tricky. Wait. Could it be that the pants are too long? I think the pants are too long, because this is one of those one mistake and you have Mick fucking screwed situation. Eh. But right now, I'm thinking that the pants are too long. Because even though the Nickel Samurai in this one is, like, spreading the like their legs apart, so that could increase... But I don't know. This is my second least favorite contradiction in all of Ace Attorney, says my YouTube chat. Hmm. But yeah, there's... I'm just trying to think because... <laughs> See, you're more observant than me, says my Twitch chat. But yeah, I'm fairly certain it has to do with the pants. And uh, uh, thanks to the YouTube chat for reminding me that this picture even existed. <laughs> I see streamers figured out on first try. I get so jealous. <laughs> Granted... YouTube chat did remind me that a uh, poster existed and that it was slightly important later. I failed it about 50 times in a row and then conceded uh, I needed a walkthrough. Well, I think I have found the answer. The pants are too long. If this photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I would put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lotta took. There's... Something strange with it. There's, there's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth. I think we can all agree there's nothing strange with this photo. There's no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. Debunk with a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Um, well, I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this go by. Where the heck did she take this photo from anyway? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? <laughs> Shut up, Edgeworth. <laughs> okay, I got, uh, I got to Twitch chat. Figured I'd make it simpler for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now then, let's hear your objection. What about this photo is strange? The pants. YouTube chat, yell at him to save. 
I guess I kind of violated the no backseat rule here. Eh, only slightly. I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. What are you pointing to? His ankles? If you could see this person's ankles, then that would be one thing. However, you can't. And what does that mean? The costumed person in this photo could not have been Mr. On Guard. <laughs> I was all YouTube chat. YouTube chat is gone. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? I wonder if you could care to elaborate with actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai's poster. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His... his socks. You can see his socks. Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakama up just to walk. I also like that the Steel Samurai music is playing in the background. I like it. There's only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. I love the implications that Matt wears socks. The only contradiction worse than this is in Ace Attorney Investigations 1. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that because I want to suffer myself. I'm all right, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Edgeworth is unusually calm today. And that's true. He's just letting the trial run itself, as he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then haven't I damaged his case at all? No, Phoenix. I believe that Edgeworth has gone on to be a good guy, and he's just like, well, the truth's coming out, that's good. <laughs> Truth is better than conviction. My cat is currently making noises. He's yelling. He's cheering me on. Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not Matt on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Hmm, I figured it would come to this. What? Right, I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is Nat Mott on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Alright, now it's time to save definitely because I have no idea where this is going. His name is Nyx the Black Void. He has a sister named Artemis, the rotisserie chicken. That's, that's hilarious. Who's the person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. What you should be focused on is Edgeworth's attitude, don't you think? Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person inside this photograph? They both have an older brother named Walmart Waluigi Walter IV Esquire. That's hilarious. Well, it can't be... The people involved. It can't be Lada. She was taking the picture. It can't be Old Bag because she cared a lot. The only person that it could be is Andrews. Why is he so calm? Because the convo is no longer centered around Old Bag, basically. I wish that we had their heights. That would be nice. Hmm. And it can't have been him. Or could it... No. Could it have been you? I may... I might be getting a little too conspiratorial. It was Maya, obviously. She's shorter than on guard and explains how she disappeared. She was <laughs> hypnotized by the killer. But I'm just trying to... <laughs> Great, that would also put her <laughs> at the scene of the crime of another crime. And I'd have to save her, too. Hmm. Cause Adrian Andrews is obviously shorter, or at least I think she's shorter. But one Corrida. Could it have been you? Could because he left the guitar back at the studio so that he could sneak in a fake nickel samurai costume. Is that it? Could that be you? Mmm, that's a little too conspiratorial. I'm gonna go with the obvious answer and say Adrian Andrews. Uh, Adrian Andrews? 
If you want to know who that Nickel Samurai is, it is none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short, and she can freely move in and, in and out of Mr. Ungard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Ungard that night. And how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Ungard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as the murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. Are you implying that Maya can teleport? Well, she is a mystic medium. The defense moves to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Corrida. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. She's the only one with motive right now. Order! 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 <laughs> but that's the advanced stuff. But I'm just trying to think. It has to be Andrews at this point in time. All the evidence that we currently have points to her, does it not? Because she has motive when it comes to the suicide stuff and the missing diddly da. <laughs> Pearl probably knows how to teleport. That'd be hilarious. It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Ah! If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya... We just all forgot about that, didn't we? Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court! Obviously, the game wants me to raise an objection, but what do I... Like, obviously, don't I? Ah, uh, Do I? Do I? Mm. Well, we can always save and face the embarrassment. Let's go ahead and diddly-dee! Raise an objection! Ha-ha! <laughs> now then! Please, Your Honor. Continue the trial. You must pass the verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrews' testimony if she's not... Hold it! I abhor wasting such valuable time. Uh, Edgeworth? <laughs> yeah, let's go apeshit! <laughs> Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. B but we cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Tisk tisk. Unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subpoena... 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 In... Miss An Adrian Andrews is all happening according to plan. Even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? What? So was he just completely five million chest pieces ahead of me? The twist is that Phoenix overturns the legal system and makes it a law that all trials end in one day. <laughs> the evil Phoenix Wright alternate universe. After losing this case, in, uh, or winning the case, after one day in losing Maya, he determined that all cases must end in one day. What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. She is the next witness. Everything... Everything was planned out in advance by that man? Somehow I knew there was no way Edgeworth could overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well, we will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a ten minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a ten minute recess. I'm picturing Andrews just face palming. Probably. Oh, that took quite a while, but we can continue on just a little bit more. This, this one's, this one feels long. But hey, why does Edgeworth feel like he's just planned all this out? It's like he knows. You got through the worst of it. Yay! Dude, I can't believe that Adrian, 
No way! Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews! Oh, it's long, all right! She is your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your hakama. Hmm, because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corrida. <laughs> yeah, because there's going to be a moment where Edgeworth is just insufferable. And at that moment, I prefer Fran over him. Yeesh, well, I can't wait to see that. But why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She, was her, she has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be all right. I'll get you acquitted by the end of the day. Give me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix, you think her motive is related to Celeste Impax's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impax as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impax suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and that person thought to have hidden it is Juan Corrida, the victim of this murder. God strikes again. I envy anyone who can sleep like a log. Definitely. Matt, I hate to tell you this, but Andrews is a lesbian, and she has no interest in Juan. Yeah, that's possible. Oh, they were just friends. She just totally couldn't survive on without her. And that's why I, th and that's why I think Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corrida, all to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible, but one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' dependency issues with regards to Miss Impax. It was Edgeworth. It looks like... You... The only thing that's stopping me from thinking that Edgeworth played the role of the killer is the fact that Franziska got shot. That's the one thing that just throws me on so many of my diddly D's. Franziska got shot in the shoulder, which is now Von Karma tradition. But who the hell? It has to. Although it would be kind of funny if Gumshoe was the one who shot her. He's like, this is for my pension. Don't let your guard down yet. Also, I think this is the longest that a court session has gone into the day. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. Gumshoe would never. You never know. He's a man with nothing to live for. He's losing his job. The prosecution calls to the witness. Calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corrida's room. Dick Gumshoe, Ace Avenger. And she still has that, that picture. That, that, that card. Courtroom will resume, and I need a drink. <laughs> Several drinks. I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. My C, now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, what is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out about my, more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, oh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corrida. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan, but this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry-and-bait matter. Or was that bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. But I... but I didn't kill him. <laughs> I'm the manager of Matt Ungard, and I also need a drink. Everyone needs a drink. Speaking of that, while everyone in the court needs a drink, remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> no one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to defer. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well then, witness. Please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. Another day, another heavy bias on the judge's end. Basically. 
It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room, and there was his dead body. I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, the exact same scene in the crime photo. Why is there a piece of paper there? There's not a piece of paper in the crime scene photo. You liar. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. But you didn't drink it! You bore! You didn't! You didn't drink it! You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes, sadly, I didn't remember to... I didn't remember not to touch things at the crime scene. I almost thought she said I uh, all forgot to drink it. And I would have... Ah! Uh, and I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. My see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She's one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. So, you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant the trial is over. Understood? I think Matt committed tax evasion. That would be funny. We thought it was a murder. It was actually an Al Capone. I'll quickly save. And we'll press on everything, but... I think... That I know exactly which one to... Uh, to... Press her on, because... I, this was not touched. Is Mia relating uh, Adrian to Von Karma? <laughs> that'd be kind of... This was the... <laughs> that'd be kind of amusing. But doubtful. She's not enough of a, an ass. And what was Mr. Ungard doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was sleeping on gears. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm, Mr. Ungard did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say it could not have been taken out of his room, yes. Excuse me? It? What are you? Right, I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with a subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ungard's knife from the, his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right. Did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. She looks so annoyed with him in that picture. That face is everything. After that, I went to Juan's room. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Hmm. I feel like we can press further. <laughs> Wright can make a sentence whenever he wants. Just take five penalties. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Or, but... I don't think that really matters too much, because there's a lot of things about... Like... Hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't think it's, like, worthwhile pressing further, because she went in there, it was like, so the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? But it was with the other heroes at this little convention thing, so I'm going to let her be for now. I should back off. As long as I don't have any proof, she's not going to talk. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? If we can always go back and do it later. I was, and there was his dead body. I was in shock. You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corrida. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I don't think there's much reason to contest that. I felt as the faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. This is definitely important. We're gonna... Juice? Yes, there's a bottle of uh, tomato juice on this table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? 
Huh? There were no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. And plus it was full. I, I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without drinking it. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm that you confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corrida, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank. And didn't think that was... I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say? Press further! Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that you said you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I, I'm sorry, it's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. <laughs> Instigate! Cause, <laughs> cause anger! Miss Andrews, just how much of a lesbian are you? Oh, you can't ask why people are white. F flower vase? Are you talking about the one in, uh, ooh, she said that everything is exactly as it was in the crime scene photo. But if she knocked over the vase, then the, uh, Bibbidi Bop guitar case was closed. Flower vase? Are you talking about the one in the floor in the crime scene photo? This mess of, this mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. I don't know how is your <laughs> divorce of Mr. Edgeworth coming along. Who told you that? You already have proof she's a lesbian. Her name sounds like Miss Andry. I, I don't think so. Adrian Andrews? Eh, it doesn't click with me. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. But I think you did. We're going to press and then show the case. What kind of flower vase was it? It was a glass vase, and it was a fairly big and heavy. I thought it would try to take Juan's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding down on the dresser, and that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. So, when you come in, you see a dead body, you pour yourself a glass, set the glass down, then take a pulse? You sound like a madman! And that's a, when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd, I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's when she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between your perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. There is. I warned you earlier that uh, she would not crack so easily. The only way to make her uh, is to keep on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some strong, decisive evidence. I have to find something. I just have to, for Maya's sake. And I know exactly what that is. Because... This guitar... But only on top of the lid. BAM! You testified that you knocked the flower vase over. Is that correct? Yes. And you're sure it fell onto the guitar case? I is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what's so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case sh should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. It's always a little awkward when they say there's nothing weird about this testimony. Better press first, even when you have pressed and revealed the contradiction. That is kind of funny. It's just the default thing in case you pressed through. That's very true. Furthermore, there's no other strange... There's one other strange thing about this guitar case. And what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Ah. What is your point, right? That case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. 
She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. <laughs> yes, that is right. She did implicitly say that she didn't touch the guitar case. But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar case was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. That may very well be, however... Uh, the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case. Something could have been in the case. Hmm, it seems that there's no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you, uh, do we need to pay her more details? Make her testify, I say. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. Heh, <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. All right, I'll follow along for now. <laughs> Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Well, the... Hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now, it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm, using any way to change the topic, a convenient escape for a weak man. Harsh, Edgeworth. Hmm, but I think I have something that, like, none of this feels press-worthy. But I'm going to say, suppose I must have opened the case, except yo motherfucker, it only has Corridor's fingerprints! There's no way you were the one who opened the guitar case! Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim! Ah! So if you did open it, you had to have gloves! What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left fingerprints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time and now you're... Oh, it's a long past elementary, Phoenix. It's college, my dear. But... Yeah, you... If you say that you wore gloves, you kind of imply that you could have also wore more. Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony, so of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing glo a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the crime scene. That is strange. Because she left fingerprints on the wine glass! You are wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Surprise, motherfucker, get bent. I have proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah, uh, even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah, uh, what? <laughs> oh, uh, your glasses just explode and you have more glasses? What? What? <laughs> Rewatching this makes me realize how much of a fool I am for game overing so much in this trial. Ah, hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> I guess like her, her eyesight is because she has multiple pairs of glasses. Order! 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 Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here. Something else was carried in with that guitar case. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but the guitar... The bright red guitar was at the studio! Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, no, that's not right either. <laughs> Phoenix, are you dumb? Who goes through more pairs of glasses each day? Andrews or Wellington? Who knows? Hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that, so the witness was not wearing gloves despite the fact that on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards his unrelated topic and lull us into his misguided... 
No, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you're so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please enlighten us as to why the guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. It has to have carried something, but what? Uh, can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well, let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing. You don't mean... <laughs> He's gonna say a black guitar? So you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? I honestly don't know. Hmm. You don't... Could it be? Could it be my idea? Could it be? Indeed, a second samurai costume? Could it be? Was I correct? Because that's the only thing. Because he had to have taken something in with him. Hmm. Right? Right? Save first, definitely. Oh, wait, I can't. Oh, well. I think I saved earlier. Yeah, I saved earlier. I'm gonna say it was a samurai costume, but well, first let's go over all the evidence. What is something in the evidence that could have been in the case? Let's see. That's not at all relevant. Radio transceiver, not relevant. Camera, don't think it's relevant. Mm, article, it has nothing to do with something that would be carried in. The hotel guide map, no, no. Yeah, the only thing that it could have been was uh, the, 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 this? This is a photograph! Yes, but what is important is what's in the picture, Your Honor. So I was right? The guy brought in a second samurai costume? My crackpot theory was correct! <laughs> in this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the music case was the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume! But what?! Mr. Wright, explain yourself! Wright, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to do something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? But Phoenix, that doesn't make sense, because he would have had to have brought the... Juan! Juan would have had to have brought the camera, the, the camera, the samurai costume in! Why would he do, like, because Corrida would have had to brought it in, then she would have had to have found it. Uh, I thought you had to use the poster, I didn't know you could also use Lotus photos to indicate the costume. I, it felt more correct because, well, it's the costume leaving the room, I felt the context would work, but I guess this game does have, like, multiple evidence, like, corollary, so that would be nice. Oh, she... I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You... You mean this photo? Yes, the one I gave you. Murder! Order! It looks like we've wandered in quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. But wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case of all places? Hmm, true. This is a little baffling. Hmm, could it have been that... Juan Corrida maybe wanted to get revenge for losing, 
and he knew that he was going to lose ahead of time because of how the popularity polls were working or whatever. So he brought a samurai costume himself to get revenge. <laughs> uh, as opposed to the cases in Apollo Justice where it always I always game over because I knew the point to make but not the evidence to make it with. I think that was my main fear in the first game. Mia, don't tell Nick that. <laughs> Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? It could have been stolen from Ungard, but was it a spare costume? It wasn't stolen because the other guy was wearing his costume. It has to be... Yeah, it has to be a spare costume. Mr. Ungard did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had brought this spare to the ceremony on purpose. The Nickel Samurai was going to make a confession! The Nickel Samurai was going to make a confession, and, uh... The Nickel Samurai was going to make a confession, on guard, didn't know what we were talking about. Juan Corrida was going to claim that he was the uh, the Nickel Samurai all along, wasn't he? Wasn't he? I mean, Dot Matrix from Spaceballs needed six costumes made because they kept breaking. To say nothing of the extremely awkward Pizza the Hut from the same movie. Never watch Spaceballs, I need to. I hear it's a classic. But yeah, my... My theory is, the, the Nickel Samurai that said there was going to be a confession had something to do with uh, the fact that this spare costume was brought by Juan, and Juan was going to try and lie about something. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corrida, was the Jammin' Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What would the reason be behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. <laughs> what are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had a spare nickel samurai costume? Phoenix. Are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer, and then answer of gusto. I believe in you. Alright, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume was because he was going to confess something! What is this? On the night of the murder after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida himself. Confess his love for Wendy Oldbag, obviously. That would be the ultimate attack on On Guard. No, that would only work if On Guard dressed up as the Jammin' Ninja. And then Oldbag would just destroy Juan through life. It's why Juan had a signature for someone named Wendy. But it was specifically from the Jammin' Ninja. Is, uh, Juan made a thing anything. I have a stupid question. Do you have a tumbler? Yes, I do. It should be in my link tree, which should be in any description place. I, maybe. It should be linktr.ee slash neon icy wings. Do you want to be mutuals? Maybe. The, the victim? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corda was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. He was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and hold a press conference. But why would the victim do such a thing? I post a cat once a day. That's always a, That's good content. That's something I don't quite know yet, however. What I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. 
and by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corrida, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. But, but... Is that... the same? Is that important? <laughs> Miss Andrews? I can see why you're pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. <laughs> Shut up, Edgeworth, but Edgeworth was right. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him, that was also me. You? Juan had bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? Don't you dare say it, lady, because I know your secret too. I can destroy you too. And do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guards is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I, I don't know what it is. Ah, uh, I see. I, I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone, but that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. But protect Mr. On Guard? But you don't, you wouldn't do that. And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. But that doesn't ex... Well, that doesn't explain why she would take the steel... Like, the Nickel Samurai costume, wear it, and walk out of the room. I just have a naturally suspicious personality. What's wrong? That probably could be a defense somewhere. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. Well, you see, I have a bunch of mental issues. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi from what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, and the button and the knife, but I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. He died from strangulation! He died from strangulation, not stabbing! This does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. Looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. I shall save, because paranoia, paranoia. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ah. Uh, if you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things. A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should already have known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school. At least not from what I remember. May I continue now? Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. So would you say that his need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the press conference and prepared the costume. Then why would you protect him? A hold it, an objection, and a take that. That's true. Nick, you got your badge from cereal boxes. But I'm sure Mr. On Guard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Do I have proof? I don't think I do. Do I? Uh, anyway, <laughs> he knows. The important thing here is the information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Miss Andrews. Please correct your testimony if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? Hmm. I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. 
curse will save. Now we got a bit of progress. Has Mr. Ungar done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Corda with his press conference, and that event was supposed to bring down Mr. Ungar, yet you still helped out. That person on trial right now is Mr. Ungar, right? What the witness was thinking helping the victim with his plan is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. Yeah, because he was... Yeah, he didn't, so I don't feel there's a need to do that. By the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. No, they... And during the knife, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? The button was found in the peats of Matt's Hakama, isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh, it looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. <laughs> With an icy stare, yes. How do you know who I am? Miss Andrews, for Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. The button was torn off uh, Juan during his fight with the uh, map, but that couldn't be true because he was strangled and then stabbed. It says so here. Time of death, strangled with a scarf, then stabbed. So it wouldn't be during the fight. So I'm going to assume we need to present this because it specifically is the button was torn off the fight during the fight implying that the knife was like stabbed flung off the knife during the stab and that's how the blood got there but he was strangled first yeah this is the victim's autopsy report it clearly states the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf strangulation the knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. Uh, and what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. <laughs> Time for Edgeworth to update the autopsy report? That would be a hilarious callback. He's only ever done that once. Exactly, which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah. That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Order! Order! What is the meaning? What is the meaning of this, right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does this change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We know now this button was not torn off during the fight. I'm going to quickly save, just in case. While you are <laughs> going down a roller coaster, remember to stay hydrated. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposefully rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? To pin the crime on Angard. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. There's no way anyone would put a bloodied button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. On Guard was set up, and I still don't really know who because I don't think that Adrian is the killer. I just, I don't, I don't feel it, but maybe she is. It's weird. Remember to stay hydrated as your brain catches on fire. Because the only person that could have really taken the suicide note was Juan. 
So maybe she did do it for revenge, but why would she work with Juan to set up the press conference only to kill him before the press conference? Unless it was to put people, like, away from the rooms. Because if people were away from the rooms waiting for the press conference instead of hounding the dressing rooms, then maybe? But I don't know! And that's right, Mr. Unguard was set up by the real killer, of course. <laughs> and the real murderer is? Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? I don't know. Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. I don't think this is the end. But from the information that we currently have, and from the way that Phoenix is going, the person that we have to think the killer is, is Adrian. So I'm going to have to present that. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet, not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Unguard, it has to be her from this, like, perspective. It might not be her, but from the, the game wants me to present her, I am sure of it. Miss Adrian Andrews. Because it's all a little weird. Because it's all just a little weird. I, I choose you! Use... Objection! You are Mr. Corda's killer! What? I like his, like, he just gets to choose the killer. Order! 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 Mr. Wright! This is a very grave matter! Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews! How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you! Tip! How many glasses do you have? <laughs> Any evidence? What about penalty bar sliding away? <laughs> then... What... what about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he'd already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Unguard was the real killer... There's no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama! Ah! Seriously, how many glasses do you have? The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is yet again Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. Oddly well done art there. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now who could have known that there was just a cost such a costume inside the guitar case? The person who I helped put it there. It would only have been the person who could prepare the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. N no, I... But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. It was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! And to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe this Nickel Samurai's Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in statue, are you not? P please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um. 
Yeah, I appreciate the sketches, even though they spoil one of the culprits in one game. Huh. Weird. But a part of me is now wondering, is the killer literally the killer? And they orchestrated this twisted web to put the blame on Andrews instead? Could that be it? But that still doesn't explain why the killer would leave, like, the same conch shell kind of playing card in Adrian's bag and then use, like, leave the same one to let Maya escape. So, yeah, I think that's it. I think someone else is the killer, somebody we might not have noticed yet. Maybe Impax, who's mysteriously alive somehow through shenanigans? But I don't think it's Adrian. I think the killer went overboard placing as many incriminating evidence pieces there to incriminate on guard, then kidnapped Maya so that they could then say on guard is being set up by the real killer, finish this in one day, so that Phoenix would overlook the fact that all of this is also sliding really good. I don't know, it's weird. Ace Attorney is known for its nonsense, but they're not that unhinged. You never know! This is the second game, they could go insane! <laughs> I got her this time. Miss Andrews! I... I... I refuse to testify. What was that? Th th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if, I c if it can incriminate me. That basically... <laughs> it's not un that unhinged yet. Oh boy. Well, yes, you're absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with the way to avoid self-incrimination by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something that most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room, it was the judge! You know, the one who's hiding Max's bust a little. Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. That's it. That's when Francica planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things looked bad. You did a good job proving everything up until this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done. <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? What is hu so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything that good lawyer has here proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did, in fact, harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corridor. If you didn't know, the penalty for saying the bus is behind the judge's bench at the end of the big top is hilarious. Or should I say penalties? And you do, Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corridor? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But, Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what a crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking the defiant attitude again. But Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true! In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is declare a recess. A recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter, and at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow Oh yeah, that's another thing. So what do we do here? Well, damn. <laughs> he penalizes you twice! 95% of your bar! Jesus. <laughs> I guess don't accuse the judge of being in on a crime. We don't have a tomorrow. If we get a if we don't get a not guilty verdict today then Please wait, your honor. That's not necessary. The trial 
Please continue the trial! What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... that's not it! This isn't about that! Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is! Please, let the trial continue! If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify! Now then this court is... And I guess Edgeworth picked up on that. It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation was something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews... When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and I can't help but think now how unnatural it is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we found, find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. The last time uh, someone forfeited their right to testify, they gave me an instant game over. And also became like a thunder god. Weirdo man. Hmm. I don't know what it's about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he a friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. And Rise for the Ashes, there's a bad ending where you implicate Emma if you uh, don't know. I think I read, like, after I beat the first game, I read up on that. And it's like, that's, that's why I was so paranoid. Because the game gave me that little, like, ooh, like, Lawyer Laws for Kids book. And it's just like, I'm going to be very careful from now on. <laughs> That glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and I saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something. I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked over the flower vase. Uh, while everything goes crazy, remember to... Remember to be hydrated while the world goes on fire. Hmm, so you pulled the glass of juice for the victim, despite the fact that the motherfucker said that you did it for herself, the whore! Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Ah, oh, yes, you know, your thought process as you found the dead body during the part where you found the dead body testimony. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I've always played those games moment to moment, the exception being the Grand Ace Eternity Duology, which is my two favorite AA games. I can't wait to get to those. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. When I found the body, I told a bunch of lies. I didn't really put it for myself. Then why did you say so, you whore? But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there's a, a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. I'm still so buttered about the unspeakable story. After so much effort and genius, I died on the final proof. And I'll still swear it was because of misleading dialogue. Fair. That's happened to me from time to time. I forget which one it was, but... Dialogue in a case led me astray. Precisely, I could have said it better myself. Uh. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in a messy state. So it was a mess. Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight, Mr. Corridor? <laughs> uh, come on, Phoenix, that's silly. And also... Aye, aye, aye. I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Uh, 
And then, what did you see next, witness? And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. Slumped over? Yes, he was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me or did that right there sound a little odd, is it? I'm just very weird. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. I mean, I... I'm sorry, but if you see someone slumped over in a chair... And at this point, the knife should be sticking out of his chest, so what the hell? Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, the knife, the, uh, yeah. then why did, what did cross your mind? I thought that maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix, and then he felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see, so you didn't think he was dead at all. I'm gonna save, and because the knife was sticking out of him. The knife was sticking out of him. The knife was sticking out of him. So, you obviously would have told- seen that, don't you- So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body. Ah! What is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, your honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Miss Corrida's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought there was a dead man. Another look at this photograph moment. <laughs> look at this photograph. Uh, um, that's, well, you see? I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is? Miss Andrews, your testimony just now. It was all one giant lie. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer! No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. Honestly, if the amount of kart racers there, I'm surprised Phoenix Wright... <laughs> kart racing, it doesn't exist. That would be amazing. Imagine if you could, like, use evidence against other ri riders somehow. That would be amazing. The defendant, Mr. Matangard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt, I swear it was. He's the one who killed Juan. But you're the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. Puncture their tire tires with a attorney's badge. Heck, Mortal Kombat has a kart racer. Technically, I think it's a mini game, but yeah, it's still like a fully fledged kart racing game within a Mortal Kombat game. Imagine if Mortal Kombat 1, the new game coming out, had a kart racer like that. Wow, that would explain the 100 gigabytes. Uh, that's because. Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I. I. I refuse to testify. So you did it. You're the killer. Then there is no need for the court to continue any further. Mr. Matt Ungard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is is it over? Have we have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually, well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt on guard. Why? Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. Yeah, because she took the fifth. The absolute real truth? What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matant Guard will go free.
and in his place, you will become the guilty party. Th that's that's a lie. I I don't believe you. What? I I was told if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Franzika von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words, Don't tell me she frickin' imprinted herself onto Franziska. Yeah. <laughs> what a world. Interestingly, AA1 was uh, localized only two months after Nickelback photograph came out, while the others were localized when it was much older. That's hilarious. But yeah, Franziska frickin' manipulated her because of her dependency issues. I wouldn't mind gripping onto Franziska. Ah. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Th then, right now, Miss Andrews is. Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now and is clinging on to them. Th then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is not get our not guilty. That's my only priority. What if Franziska did it? I'd lie on the stand for a lifesaver too. I like mint candy. Hmm. This is just odd. Something's odd. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help, please. Someone help me. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue like this, therefore I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. While you think very carefully about this, remember to be hydrated. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Well, the real mastermind, isn't it obvious? There's no one else it could be except the cr woman crying over there, right? Come now, what will you do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like we should force her to testify. God, that Edgeworth voice tickles my spine. Ha ha! No, I can do Edgeworth and weird little puppet dudes' voices enough to imprint them onto people. I'm gonna say first, but I think it would be best to try and get her to testify because something weird's going on! I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. M Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure. Mr. On Guard would get an acquittal, but in his place you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? But be quiet, how dare you? you? You're trying to trick me! That's enough! I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. You're wrong. Gets that smile on his face. What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this. However... What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop Mr. Edgeworth! This witness, how should I put this, she has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop! Please stop! No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. It's no use! I have the evidence right here. Uh, that's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop, I beg of you. If people find out, if people find out, I'll... I'll... 
If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. I mean, yeah, she would be convicted guilty of murder and would have been sent to the gallows anyway. Hedgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your steel-breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk. Please, help me. Did somebody talk you into it? Nothing matters anymore. What is going on? Well, let's see. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted, honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Well, you didn't kill him, but still, who did? Stabbed the body with the knife! But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. This just got really dark. It did. A certain cowardly man. But what do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... And this is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corridor, in the chest with the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. What? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Well, this sounds like the truth. There's nothing to present. We just have to press on everything, I guess. But you could tell from the state of the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is part of the Jammin Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His body was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. Right, that explains the juice. If I had a nickel for every time someone claims I stabbed the victim but I didn't kill them in Ace Attorney, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a much, but it's weird that it happened twice. It's the world of Ace Attorney. Everything's nuts. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should forge some evidence and pin the crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. But then who the hell is the killer? Who is the killer? And who's the real killer? Phoenix just asking stupid questions when he knows he needs to end this trial. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eye towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. And then I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped the button off. So you were the one to stab the victim with the knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the bu button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. On God's Hakama. Yes, that's what I planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finished, I was returning to Matt's room. I had a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. 
There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. That's my salt bag for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for the certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. You were the one who prepared the costume, weren't you? An inconvenience? You mean the court system? Basically. Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that the Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So after that, you went back to Mr. Ungod's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Hakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. But my word, what does this all mean? Mr. Wedgeworth, is it? Because I just, I don't understand. Because even if you thought that M Matt committed the murder, the fact of the matter is that while there is potential motive, one, Matt would have had to have known that Juan knew his, knew his secret and Juan was going to then present his secret out into the open. Matt didn't know this. Matt was asleep in his room. She confirmed that. She confirmed that he was in his room sleeping at some point after the murder had taken place. And just the, the matter is, there's no evidence of Matt going into the room and killing him. And we have established in this trial that you need motive, opportunity, and decisive evidence. The motive is shoddy at best, if you ask me. There is no decisive evidence, and honestly, we don't even know if there was opportunity. Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Franziska, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I, I had no choice but to believe in her words. Well, what do we do now? What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. But wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. I want to hunt Edgeworth for sport. Granted, he's doing the best he can with what he's got. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. Nor is there any that points to Matt. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. B but Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. Because he's an asshole. You don't tell a woman who, who don't care if she died or not. You just don't. It was... Eh. Fair enough. But still. He was playing the master chess game. And if you think about it, he is trying to catch the real murderer. It's a very callous way. It's kind of a weird mirror image of who he was in the first game. In the first game, he was a prosecutor who wanted to get the guilty verdict no matter what. Now he's a guy who wants to get the truth no matter what. Granted, he he's probably a bit hyperbole of the matter of, I'm gonna draw the truth from your still-breathing lips one way or another, but still. In this crazy world, <laughs> eat him. But we don't know if he's that rich. We can't eat the rich if we don't know it's him. Oh, the echo on the gavel. And then everybody disappeared. Huh. Wow. And now Phoenix feels like he failed because he fears for Maya's life. Today's... Today's trial. It's over. And I didn't win an acquittal.
Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. <laughs> Feed him to the carnivorous Maya face. <laughs> we send <laughs> Edgeworth up into the mountains to be eaten. Although I don't remember at the time, you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. So the killer is literally the killer! <laughs> abso fucking lootly right. They'll be hungry for sure. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket, but it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as a clue is to the case, I don't see why- HOLD IT! MAYA! Wait, wait, Oh, I thought Maya might have come in. WITNESS THAT CARD! GIVE IT TO ME! HURRY! E Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This! I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! She had it out in the open. I, I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotionally... Don't tell me I was... No! No! Don't you dare, game! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Did I put it out on the first time that I saw the killer and the killer said Mr. Phoenix, right? Is Francisca the killer? No, it can't be. But that's the only thing that can make me think why Edgeworth would notice it. Right? Right? Would Francisca go as far as to be a killer? Like her father? No, that's stupid! Come on, my brain goes in wild places. The only reason I thought that is because the game said things. He knows that card, so maybe it might be related to Francisca. That card? What in the world is it? What does it mean? And besides, this is Phoenix Wright. Crazy things happen in these games. And do you really think it would be beyond reason for me to think that the only other person to say the full Mr. Phoenix Wright could be the person who says Mr. Phoenix Wright? All right, we're going to go just a bit longer because there'll probably be, like, stuff, some, I don't know, things... We'll see if anything crazy happens, and then we'll stop because we're nearly in three hours of stream. Although people in the fandom have decided that Phoenix himself is relative to the De Killers. Most intense trial yet. Hope you enjoyed. It was very intense. Not the hardest, but definitely interesting. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! There, there, Pearls. I, I can't take it anymore. Poor girl. Hey, did you get my tumbler? It's still in my chat, and I'll definitely check it out afterwards. Look, it'll be alright. Everything may still work out. Hmm? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And we won't because Mr. On Guard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. The guy did say that uh, he needed a guilty verdict on the first day. Gotta go. Better be safe. Okay. Hope uh, things go good for you. And thank you for tuning in for so long for this stream. <laughs> Poor girl. I wonder if it's taxing to, like, hold the spirit channeling for so long. Cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya's in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So, hey, you guys. Oh, I thought it was going to be Maya again. Hey, you guys. Glad I caught you, pal. M Mr. Scruffy Detective. Oh boy, looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. No, thank you, Yami Yugi Abridged. <laughs> this has how many subscribers? <laughs> it's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal! But we're kind of busy right now. Well, nothing crazy happened, but let's talk about the future of the Edgeworth. And then I think we'll end the stream because things are gonna go, I can just tell. So, what are you gonna do now, from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? 
Oh, that? Uh, uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I don't have anything coming in on the next... until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal. Say what? You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. On God's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought I'd say something like that. He didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible! But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself. But I still don't think there's something fun- I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would you want to- No, no, I, I'm all- I mean, almost need to frame a strong guard. I couldn't figure that out from anything she said at all today. Then, then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Or what's more- Or that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. That's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Franziska von Karma. Speaking of Miss von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Miss von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by pistol, pal. But she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. But she'll be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you gonna go visit her, pal? No, well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to get to the trial today. So maybe it'd be good for her if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Hey, go get her kink out a little bit at the hospital. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. Now I'm definitely not going. She is not going to whip the child. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital... Oh, yeah. Oh, no! Oh, no, not the hottie clinic! Well, at least I'd get to do the voice again. That's one of my favorite voices, but oh, no, not the hottie clinic. Uh, it's tying into the other cases. That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. And with that, we shall end today's stream. A lot happened! That was a jam-packed full case segment, and we still don't even know who the real killer is. Like, again, unless something weird has to be going on, like, one is tied to Impax. Impax is tied to Andrews. It might be possible that she's tied to Matt as well, but, and then Juan might have hid the, like, suicide note, but that doesn't seem to be, like, Andrew's, like, modus operandi. She, like, she seemed to care enough about Juan, and upon seeing that he was killed, immediately went and went to frame Matt for it. But who could the killer be? Like, again, my brain jumps to the possibility of Impax faking her death. But obviously there was a suicide case. So that's why I think that's kiboshed. Uh, the police obviously investigated the suicide. So there had to have been a body and had to have been confirmed. Just, well, I have no idea where this is going, and we just need to follow the evidence. Follow the evidence and the logic of the game. Ha ha! My madness just goes on. I still don't know who the killer is. The killer shot Franziska. Things are crazy. But thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you liked what you saw, I have two YouTube channels: Neon Icy Wings for edited content. I swear, edited content is coming in the future. Yeah. 
as well as the gaming channel and streaming channel Neon Icy Games, where I stream to and then upload all of these streams there for posterity as well as just archival purposes. So people can watch my previous playthroughs of games like Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the Mass Effect trilogy, and many more. And then, if you prefer to watch me on Twitch.tv, I have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. And if you want even more from me, like art, similar to my little guy in the corner, you can follow me on various Tumblrs that can be, well, m Tumblrs, social medias. My brain's on fire. But yeah, many social medias like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Inc., Blot, just so many that can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash Neon Icy Wings, or it can be found directly through like the link places, bios, and descriptions of the internet world because there are too many social medias. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.